It has been a drama-filled week for the West Coast Eagles with a plethora of first-team players unable to play in round two against North Melbourne due to COVID reasons. It had a lot of people screaming the F word. So, was what happened to West Coast fair or not? No, I didn't like it. I, I must admit, I, I sort of felt like there was maybe a different way we've got. I know that's the only way that we've got right now, but that, that just felt like it was, it, it was too much and it was, it was too far a disadvantage for one team. It's funny, we had a bit of a discussion about, well, listen, would we, you know, to make it competitive, would we think about offering some of our younger players if they wanted to pick them to play and, you know, to come over it? I feel for Adam Simpson right now. It was clearly put on the agenda by the AFL at the start of the season that this was, would be what the situation looks like for clubs, but whether we've got it right as an industry, I'm not sure. It is a fascinating question. Have we got it right? We've got a statement from the AFL, which we'll get to shortly, but, Ross, I'm going to start... With you, reasonably fresh out of the game, how would you have felt if you were put in Adam Simpson's position on the weekend? Well, as coaches, you're going to have empathy for the others because, you know, it's about win-loss and your personal survival. But, you know, it's easy to point out the problem. Give us a solution. Yep. So the AFL have put forward a solution to continue the season on. We can't have three years of economic carnage to the game. The coffers only run so deep. And it's just not taking all the threads and understanding them all. It's a very narrow view. I understand the view, but I don't think it's the greater the good of the game and the financial impost of the game would be too much to delay games, cancel the games. That, that's my simple view. Caro, did the AFL uh, consult the clubs for any of other opinions that Ross is maybe suggesting that Look, you can loan players and things like that? Well, well, Damien Hardwick's been a one for loaning players. Yes. He's put this up before. Mm. You know, if I've got five ruckmen and you've got... That is never going to work. Yeah. That's got whiskers on it. It's a lovely fraternal idea, but it's going to be manipulated at some point yep. down the track. We all know that. The, the meeting with the clubs, Matthew, I think came straight after, pretty much straight after Gillam McLaughlin had visited Fox Footy mm. and Channel 7. And it was made pretty clear to the AFL, and fair enough too, that they don't want changes. They want their schedule to go ahead as planned. Now, this is not a TV-driven thing, but obviously the broadcasters had a big opinion on this. And I think it's really strange that the coach are arcing up now. I mean, I know they were playing one of the bottom teams in North Melbourne, but those scenes we just witnessed didn't make me feel uncomfortable. That was... It was the making of the West Coast Eagles, in a way. I mean, look, no-one thinks they're going to finish top four. I thought Adam Simpson, who struggled early in COVID, carried himself brilliantly. It was a great moment for footy. We saw, you know, Aaron Black comes out, you know, has about 15 possessions, kicks a goal. No-one was... Com Some of them looked out of place, of course, but it was just a really romantic it, day for football, yep. and it wasn't a... It, you know, it was not a big, big win for North Melbourne. And maybe it's a point to where the game's going to end up and lists are going to end up with players playing in second-tier competitions... And being up. called on when needed. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a sign of the times. And Footy Classified did speak with Andrew Dillon, who is, of course, the new football boss, sits one rung caro above Brad Scott. And he provided us with a statement today, basically saying, as you reiterated, Caro, that they made it very clear to the competition and all of the coaches and all of the clubs early in the year that this would happen. Now, the statement goes on. We've got... Every club has access to 20 different top-up players, essentially a list of 65. No one thought it was going to happen this early, but it has. And that goes on to explain it there. Look, a lot of people have been criticising the integrity of, of what happened on the weekend. I actually think, Ross, I'm interested in your thoughts in this. Integrity only comes to play when you change the rules on people mid-season. That if, if everyone goes in with the same understanding of the same rules, that the integrity is clear. Well, the consistency of application, but the inconsistency will come with different clubs will have different exposures to COVID. But maybe over the season, it will average well, out. Yeah. And I'd be more concerned if I think I could win it. I'm in a top four club or a top eight. I think teams that are rebuilding and that, yeah, it's not ideal. But those on the real hunt to, to be affected potentially down the track would be really concerning for them. Yeah, but Cara, the, the show oh. must go on. Really simple. Oh, I love the broader chat from the coaches, though. Uh, the different point of views. Uh, that's that's oh. understandable. And, and I think that the oh, will... I love it, too. And I love people who buck the system and are honest about what they don't yeah, like. Yeah, but, but can I just finish, too, that uh, what about, say, the result where there might have been a 15-goal margin? That, that will come. Nor, I think the AFL got lucky that the West Coast Eagles were playing uh, North Melbourne Football Club. If this was Collingwood, Carlton, Essendon... Uh, and they got smashed by 15 or 16 goals. 
I think that's Matthew, when there would be Matthew, a difference. That's probably going to happen, though. The, 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 yeah. Look, the AFL are probably... Oh, well, I know that there's... Some people in the AFL are filthy that the coaches came out and said this when they all agreed yeah. to it. They're disappointed. But I agree with you. Coaches have got every right to have an opinion, even if they've changed the mind, their minds in the goalposts now. But I, I just say again, you know, if you are the Melbourne Football Club or the Western Bulldogs... A, a, a club that thinks you are in with a chance this year, even Carlton now at 2 and nil. surely you are saying to your players, just for heaven's sake, be careful. Sam said last week or the other night that players aren't going to stop going out. OK, don't stop going out, but be sensible. What's happening in the West... Well, I'm not saying is... go to Revolver at 3 a.m. Well, with exactly. 500 other don't. people, but if you want to go to the pub and have dinner, But, but what, what's going on in the West is something that happened in Victoria, happened in New South Wales, to a lesser extent Queensland. It's going to happen and, to either teams. And it, well, it'll probably happen to Fremantle next. Yeah. But I, I honestly believe that there are ways you can circumnavigate this if you believe you are in top four contention. No, well, short of locking people up, Cara, I don't think you can personally. No, no, you, uh, Sam, none of us want to get COVID. You can get it at the service some, station. Some, some of us car, are more... Like it's going to happen. Some of us are more careful than others. Wear a mask when you go out. Just be sensible about can, it. Can, can, I, can we finish off on this? I'm not sure what people criticising the situation want the AFL to do. Like, if you want the fast that was the BBL at the end of last year with the Melbourne Stars, when they were literally handing out... I mean, listen to Michael Vaughan here, joking about this. I'm pretty sure Glenn was looking around going, which one's which? He wasn't too sure, but he got it right. Well, he was looking around. I mean, they were picking guys from Ringwood Cricket Club, for goodness sake. There you go, they flew someone down from North Sydney. I mean, if the AFL didn't have the rules in place that they had on Sunday, they would have been ringing up... But that's pretty much what they did, Sam. That's pretty much what they are doing. No, no, but they've no, had no, notice. They've, they've got, got, put a list together of 20, yeah, Matthew. Yeah, and, but they're not. And they've picked the eyes out. Like, Stefan Jaro was an ex... He was a listed AFL player But he's player not in the best 800 players Paddy, in the Paddy game. Nash. Well, that, you know what that tells me? Yeah. Bring on Tasmania. Bring on Tasmania. If there are enough top-up players to actually go into an AFL field and some of them look like they're at home, I think it's... Well, it, the it, incident yeah, lad on the wing kick five on Deboe. He was running in the waffle last year. But he's playing with quality players. So what's your solution, Matthew? My solution is that I'd like to know when a game could potentially be cancelled. What do you think the number uh, is? I think if what West Coast dealt with on the weekend, I think I'd seriously consider looking at where you could potentially find a game, because uh, it might only happen to the Perth you can't place. Change the goal place. You can't change the goalposts. You, you can't, you you can't move. I take your point. You yeah. can't move uncertainty to further uncertainty. Like, in, six, in three months' time, we might have three clubs that are in a similar position to what the West Coast is. But I think that's the other point. People are saying West Coast and Fremantle are at more risk. My understanding is if you have COVID, and this has come out at yeah. AFL House, that you're only got immunity protection for 30 days. Mm -hmm. And after that, it's a level playing field. So Melbourne clubs are at as equal risk to um, Fremantle and West Coast. Mm -hmm.